The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Welcome to this time of worship. Please join me in the call to worship. No red balloons bobbing out of pews today, yet this is still the day we celebrate Grace's breath shattering the shutters of our hearts. On this day, clad in our pajamas, sitting at home, may we continue to let the spirit of new life breathe upon us. From near empty sanctuaries, through video worship, we gather with our sisters and brothers proclaiming that we are God's Pentecost. On this day, we would touch virtually all who remain sheltered in place, safe in God's grace. There will be no birthday cake after church today, yet in the days to come we will continue to speak of God's love and the Spirit's peace for all. So that even apart, people know they are not alone. So that when that day comes, and we know it will, people will find a community awaiting them, even for hiding in fear behind closed doors. Let us pray together. A spark that is all we need on this day, imaginative God, to light our quarantine aloneness so that we can burst into bonfires which signal to all those around us you are bringing life and grace to us and to the whole world. A word, just one, word on this day, Holy of Pentecost, so that we can be the voice of all those forgotten by the world, so that we can be the warmth to melt all the hearts frozen by grief, so that we might speak in that still small voice, and be the ones that live out your good news to everyone we meet. A breeze, a soft, gentle breeze that stirs the curtains on this day, shattering spirit. A breeze that will stay quiet and peaceful, and still until the day comes, and if it will for us to become that storm of hope, to clear the despair from all our neighborhoods and lands. Give us yourself this day, God and community, holy and one, during this time of worship. Our first hymn today is hymn number 292, as the Holy Song.
Yes, we remain isolated. Yes, our hopes are shuttered. Yes, our souls are filled with fear. Yet on this day, we remember that God comes to such people. On this day, we celebrate that the Spirit breathes new life. On this day, we affirm that Jesus restores us to new hope. Behind closed doors, hiding from our fears, let us speak of our lives as we pray together, saying, O Pentecost Spirit, if only we could tell of your wonders in our lives, yet social media and other ways we communicate are filled with anger, bitterness, and political arguments. If only we could share how you have transformed our lives, that we are stuck in our living spaces, hiding from what is seeking to do us harm. If only we could pour you out on all those who are lonely and afraid and worried about tomorrow, that we are fearful of stepping outside our doors, even in the closed rooms of our hearts, even with our shuttered souls. You continue to move, to live, to breathe upon us with your mercy and your grace. God of this day, now in this moment, breathe your peace upon us and a fearful world, so that we might be the balm of all the anger around us. Now, on this day, breathe your hope upon us and a desperate world, so that we might drop it all on the porches of all huddling in their homes. Now, in the moments and days to come, continue to breathe your love upon us and an uncaring world, so that we might transform grudges into generosity, foolishness into common sense, and rejection into being as welcoming as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now let us have a time of silence as we confess our sins privately. Amen. Listen, it is not an old story, but ours. It may not happen with a mighty wind, but with a soft whisper. But this is our Pentecost. This is our reminder that God forgives us and fills us with all things new. Thank Thanks be to God. God gives us new hope and endless days of despair, new joy and never-ending moments of grief, and new life when we seem to have lost even the simple ability to breathe, this day and in all the days to come. Amen.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you wherever we may be right now. God, we ask that you open up our hearts and our minds. Speak to us through your holy word. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first scripture reading I would like to share with you this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34, and 35b. Our Lord, by your wisdom you made so many things. The whole earth is covered with your living creatures. But what about the ocean so big and wide? It is alive with creatures large and small. And there are the ships as well as the Leviathan, the monster you created to splash in the sea. All of these depend on you to, pro to provide them with food, and you feed each one with your own hand until they are full. But when you turn away, they are terrified. When you end their life, they die and rot. You created all of them by your Spirit, and you gave new life to the earth. Our Lord, we pray that you, your glory, will last forever, and that you will be pleased with what you have done. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and smoke goes up. As long as I live, I will sing and praise you, the Lord God. I hope my thoughts will please you, because you are the one who makes me glad. With all of my heart, I praise you, Lord. I praise you. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers together were together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions, and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone, and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this noise, but they were surprised because they were hearing everyone in their own tongues. They were excited and amazed and said, Don't all these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we hear them speaking our very own languages? Some of us are from Parthia, Media, and Elam. Others are from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya near Cyrene, Rome, Crete, and Arabia. Some of us were born Jews, and others of us have chosen to be Jews. Yet we all hear them using our own languages to tell the wonderful things God has done. Everyone was excited and confused. Some of them even kept asking each other, What does all this mean? Others made fun of the Lord's followers and said, they are drunk. Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone else living in Jeru Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. You are wrong to think that these people are drunk. After all, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. In those days I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy, and I will work miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will turn dark, and the moon will be as red as blood before the great and wonderful day of the Lord appears. Then the Lord will save everyone who asks for help. 
Pentecost is more than the birthday of the church. Although the scriptures tell us that 3,000 people accepted Christ on that first day, Pentecost is more than a mission festival or a dramatic faith defining event. Pentecost outlines a new way for us to be committed followers of Jesus Christ. Pentecost calls us to be open to the possibility that God is calling us to do something specific and wonderful for the sake of the kingdom of God right now. Clearly, the goal of the Christian church is not simply to remember what happened on that first Pentecost. The goal of the church is to keep alive that wonderful energy and vision that entered the world with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost did not just happen 2,000 years ago. Pentecost is happening all the time. The Holy Spirit continues to break in upon us. The book of Acts abounds with examples of the Holy Spirit causing remarkable things to happen. Philip baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch, Paul's conversion, Peter embracing a more inclusive vision for who can be included in the church through the baptism of Cornelius and his household. Each of these wonderful accounts shows the power of the Holy Spirit transforming a human life. Pentecost happens regularly in local congregations. I think we have had something of a Pentecost experience right in this congregation when we decided to stop focusing on just ourselves and looking outside our walls as to who we can minister to, who we can help, who we can share the love of Christ with in this great big world. In 2002, the church waited to see if it had any money at the end of the year to give money to missions. In 2002, we had no extra funds whatsoever. In 2004, I think the Holy Spirit invaded us as we became a tithing church and started some of our Keystone Mission projects. We were given a new energy. We started speaking in a different way, and people understood and were drawn to us. We continue to move out in love and compassion to touch the world. The peacemakers, the school supply, school supply backpack ministry, the food backpack ministry, the mission trips, Matthew 25 initiatives, hosting Ruby's Pantry, starting our own food pantry right here at the church and another one in Morton, financial gifts to local, regional, national, in international missions. What this means is that Pentecost continues. Pentecost is a spirit that grips a people and a congregation. Pentecost happens when we are willing to submit ourselves to a vision and leadership that comes from outside, not asking what is it in it for us, but what can we do. We will remember that the disciples were told to stay together and wait patiently. I think we are called to do the same, to stay connected with each other, to worship regularly and to pray, and to expect that something wonderful will happen through us. This is the Pentecost spirit. Jesus makes an amazing statement in the Gospel of John. He says to the disciples and to us, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, he will be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. I do not know what you see. But I think I see a Pentecost spirit in our congregation. I see a Pentecost spirit in the lives of people who are living with confidence, 
facing challenges with courage, reaching out in love and compassion to people around them, and truly trusting that God is leading them into ventures of which they cannot see the ending. I see a Pentecost spirit in the volunteering of our members, serving in so many different ways, even in this time of a pandemic. So let us not simply remember Pentecost this year. Let us anticipate Pentecost in our lives and in our congregation. Let us strive to have Pentecost in our expectations, in our willingness to take a risk for the things we believe in. For I am convinced that we can be a vehicle for bringing those tongues of fire and new hope to people who are hungry for good news and those significant numbers of people who truly desire to have their spiritual lives rekindled again. The killing of George Floyd, racism exposed, riots. Holy Spirit, show us the way to create positive change in our society for all people. Work through us as a church. Breathe on us the breath of God. Fill us with new life anew. That we may love all that you love and do what you would do. Amen. Next hymn is number 280, Come, O Spirit, Well Among Us.
Now let us affirm what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Our church is in charge of Meals on Wheels, the first, let's see, uh, from June 16th to 30th, and you can sign up for this online. Or you can contact our uh, Tina and she will sign you up. Please keep the family of Wayne Bennett in your prayers. Wayne died last Tuesday evening. We had his funeral at the church here yesterday. Please continue to keep Rosemary in your prayers. We want to thank Elias Fries for being our custodian the last uh, several months. He is uh, going to a camp job this summer, so he will be leaving us. So uh, please keep Elias in your prayers as he starts a new adventure. I want to thank uh, Savannah Joldersma today for being our, our singing leader. We're giving Peggy a break after singing at the funeral yesterday. It's wonderful to have her here. And her parents are here today too. And John and Sue Tiffany are here too. So that's uh, along with Pam and Elaine and Lee Davis is downstairs uh, taping our service for the Access Channels. So uh, we're thankful for everyone that can be here and we, we pray for the day when we all can be together again. We have some birthdays to honor. Uh, our folks uh, from the Wyndham Church watch us too and I've been given their birthdays so I'll, I'll do those first. Max Sikora has a birthday on June 2nd. Myron Peters has a birthday on June 4th. And Tom Harnick has a birthday on June 5th. And from uh, the congregation here in River Falls, today it is Kurt Meyer's birthday. On June 2nd, it is Nadia Meyer's birthday and Levon Sinclair's. On the 4th, it's Isla Rupnik's. And on the 5th, it's Gabriella Rollins and Kayla Plazas. So happy birthday to all of those individuals. Does anybody have any other announcements? Anybody? If not, let us bow our heads in prayer. Awesome God, we thank you and praise you for always being there for us. At this time, we lift up all of our joys and all of our concerns to you. Read what is on our hearts and on our minds. God, we pray for families that are grieving over the loss of a loved one. We especially lift up the Wayne Bennett family, and we ask that you bless all those that are mourning his loss. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your hope. Fill them with your mercy. God, we pray for all those that are ill. We pray for Lucille Byron's brother, who is uh, suffering greatly. We ask that you Place your healing touch upon him and be with him during his transition from his earthly home to his heavenly home. God, we pray for all the people that are ill around the world and we ask for your healing touch upon them. God, we pray for all the people in the medical industry. We ask that you bless them, give them all the strength and wisdom that they need at this time. We pray for those that are, are working on a coronavirus vaccine. Please give them all the wisdom that they need so that they can create that as soon as possible. God, we pray for the unrest in our own state. We pray for people that are outraged. 
rage over the death of the man that died that so many people saw on a video. We pray for police officers that are out there working and may feel like they're in danger at this time. We ask that you bless them and keep them safe. God, we pray for an end to the rioting that is happening. But God, what we pray for most is an end to racism in our country that has been exposed so much lately in our news. God, please change our hearts, change our mindsets. Help us to truly believe that all people are created equally and all people are loved equally by you. And some in our country have advantages because of who they are. Please help anyone that has power to use it for good to turn this world around. May anyone, no matter who they are, no matter their color, no matter their religion, may they feel safe in this country. May they feel like they are truly equal to anyone else. God, flow your Holy Spirit through our country. Transform it. Change it. Change it. We thank you, God, for always being there for us, no matter what we are struggling with in life. Please give us the strength to overcome any obstacles that are hurting our relationship with you, God. Please be with all the people that are feeling alone at this time. Please work through us and help us to do the best ministry we can do at this time. Help us to truly show the love of Christ to everyone that is in need. God, we thank you and praise you for always being there for us. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We greatly appreciate your support of the church. Since we can't pass the collection plate, please, if you are able, make your donation online on our church website or send a check to post office box 444 in Redwood Falls. To our friends watching from the First Presbyterian Church in Wyndham, you may send your check to post office box 155 in Wyndham. Let us have an offertory prayer at this time. Blow the dust off our fears, generous spirit, so we might be more giving people Blow the dust off our material gifts we think are so paltry, so we might realize how they can bring hope and life to others. Blow the dust off our mistaken views of others, so we might see them as our sisters and brothers, ready to grace us, even as we may bless them with these offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. number 291 spirit spirit of gentleness uh, verses 1 2 and 4 
now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Do you want to ring the bell, Phil? Oh, we're not going to do the last part.